She's a TV host. She's an entrepreneur. I've raised three children from three different generations. I seem very relaxed, but I'm explosive. How do you find the time? I work day and night. I wanted more praise when I was young. Yeah. It just like bullied me. It's like, yeah. pick it, pick it, pick it. Ah! What makes you happy? I made the number one female show. Just wasn't enough anymore. Joel, I don't have a mom. You're my internet mom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show of the Inside Track with me, Luca Allam. I'm delighted to welcome Joelle Mardinian. She's a TV host, she's an entrepreneur, and she's just a fantastic all round person. Joel, Thank welcome. You. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I'm very happy to have you here. Thank you so much. So um, let's start. Let's start with what you've got in front of you. What's going on here? Yeah, this is the name of my podcast. Okay. Actually, this was a gift to you, so I'm using it. <laughs> this came with chocolates inside. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's my podcast. It means in, in English, uh, from Joel's heart. Very nice. Uh, because the topics are uh, topics that I've been wanting to discuss with my audience okay. for 19 years and never had the chance because the topics were a bit daring. Okay. And I think all the platforms were scared of the backlash of such topics because specifically two of the episodes, I've never ever heard them discussed on any radio, on any TV show, in any magazine, literally nowhere. And even before I started my podcast, I was talking to someone who's in this industry, in the podcast industry. And she's someone, and I said she, so she might know who she is now. And she's someone who's actually very well connected and she does a bit of PR and marketing and all of this. And she said, oh, no, 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 Joelle, don't do that. Don't talk about those top topics. That's going to, you know. So you've been wanting to do this for 19 years, have your own podcast. You've been, you've been bottling up all these different topics. Uh, not, not I, I didn't necessarily want to do a podcast, okay. but I wanted to shine the light on important topics that we ignore in this region. Especially right. that you will understand what I'm going to say. Yeah. Living in the UK yeah. for 14 years and growing up in the UK, I was 13 when I first moved to the UK. Um, I went to school, did college, university, my first job, into jobs, my first marriage, my first son. Yeah. So I grew up in the UK, the most important years that actually were my foundations, if you want to say. Yeah. And what I used to hear on television, the things we discussed amongst friends was yeah. so different to what we hear on television, on our local television, and what we discuss as friends. Yeah. And a lot of the topics that are so important for us to discuss are ignored by our society because... No one talks about them. Well, we can talk about them today. We can talk yeah, about all kinds of things. we can talk about all of it. And you know, but I was so scared. Yeah. The next day after my podcast came out, I was in floods of tears. The relief. I thought, you know, this could be the end of my career. Really? Uh, yeah, some people made me feel that way. Uh, they made me feel that I was taking such a huge risk. But my belief on the inside that I'm doing the right thing yeah. just kept me going. It gave me that power to just, you know, talk about how to talk about sex with yeah. your children. Yeah. Look, we're going to come back to this inner power that you have. We're going to, mm. we're going to circle back to it. Um, but just sort of explain for those who don't live on this earth, what yes. do you do for a living? Because you do, you seem to have quite a lot of things going on. Yes. And you seem to be very successful at doing each and every one of them. So mm. talk to me a little bit about what it is that you do. If someone was to ask you, because I struggle with this, how do I, yeah. in, how do I introduce you to the show? Okay. It's not easy. No. <laughs> So talk to me about that. Okay, first of all, let's just say the most important thing for me is being a mom, and I'm a very proud mom. So if I want to say what am I the most proud of is the mom that I am because I'm a really good mom. I've raised three children from three different generations, which is not easy. So I have a 21-year-old, wow. and he's amazing. Can we just say 21-year-old? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. incredible. <laughs> yes. Seriously. He's 21, and oh. he's doing English literature in London, and King's College gave him a discounted rate just so they can, they can win him at their uni. He was accepted by every single university he, he applied Smart to. Smart boy, huh? 
he's a smart boy. He's, I always say, like, um, I imagine always like a, an invisible crown on top of his head. I feel like he belongs to the royal family. He's not my son. He's just too good to be true. He's an angel. He's polite. He's charming. He's super smart. My daughter is incredible, Ella. I see myself in her. She's reminding me of every stage of my childhood every year I was like oh my god I've forgotten that I was like that and I see it in her she's very shy but she's strong yeah. she's very sensitive but if you scratch the surface she will turn into a tiger suddenly yeah. and I see now where, where does she get that from she gets it from me okay. and I'm very shy so I don't like events I don't like socializing I don't like to walk into restaurants when they're full. I don't look at tables. I don't look at who's sitting on the tables. But Jamal, that's surprising given what you do. Yes, because I stare into um, cameras. They're plastic, so I don't see the audience. Yeah. So it's very hard for me at the very beginning when I was ambassador of big, big, huge brands. Yeah. They used to ask me to go on stage sometimes and literally address an audience of 500 people yeah. or more. Oh my God, I used to always say, I'm never going to do it, no matter how much they pay me. I'm just not doing this again. With time, I am 47, and I like to say I'm 47. I like to say my age, because I couldn't have achieved what I've achieved if I was younger. Come on, let's just face it. Yeah. Um, and also, many things why I like to say my age, because when I first came to Dubai, I was 28 years old. So was I. Good age. Yeah, yeah really. Good age. But I remember people telling me, your shelf life is short because they're going to replace you with a more beautiful, younger presenter. So I'm proving them wrong. I'm well, still think, on I television. Think, I, think, I think you've done that <laughs> and then some, to be honest with you. Right? Yeah. Crazy. So I'm so happy that the, the, this region, the mindset is changing. Yeah. And I want to be part of that change. Not in this particular thing that you can age and still be on television yeah. and still be someone who's liked and adored yeah, yeah, yeah. and people want to see more of you. Yeah. But in other things, like the topics I talk about in my podcast, Men El Joel, yeah. yeah. uh, to topics that also we, we're ignoring, but yeah. that change needs to happen. So my question was, how do I, you know, what do you do, what you do? And, and, so what and do the I first do? thing, so the first thing that you said was you're a mom. I'm an amazing so obviously, mom. So obviously this is the most important thing to you. Yes. So you strip away everything else. How the to raise children. The TV show, starting up businesses. Yeah. None of that matters when it compares to Those, I see them as projects. But I see that what is the most important role uh, that I have to present whilst I'm alive is to be a good mom, yeah. is to raise three children, to be amazing people, yeah. uh, humans, to for them to inspire, you know, their generation and the future de generations. Yeah. So I want my kids to be awesome and amazing, and um, and I have oh, my way of doing it. I I seem very. Um, uh, relaxed because I force myself to be in a relaxed state even when I'm not on the inside yeah. but I'm explosive yeah. so, so bubbling underneath yes. the surface there's... so I really give my kids so much attention 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 but if they do wrong it's of course no hitting and I don't do punishment by the way I've never punished any of them but it's like, no, like, no. And it's like the, the tone changes. And yeah. they know that, uh, you know, that whatever they've done is, is upsetting. Do you do that thing where you call them by their first name? Um, or even their second name or even their family name? So it's like, it's that whole, I used to get it all the time. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, when I was naughty. Look at Alam, do this. Oh, no, don't I don't do that. Don't do this. You know, I used to no. get that all the time for my parents. No, it's more, it's more of it when it's in a, a part of the conversation. Okay. And that, my mom used to blame me with my eldest son. Okay. She used to say to me, you scare him. I was like, I've never punished him. I've never yeah. laid a hand on him. Yeah. It's, and then I realized, I don't scare him. He has so much respect for me because I praise him all the time. So he doesn't like it yeah. when I'm upset, when he feels he's done wrong. And that upsets all three of them. Okay. So my kids, will, even the youngest one, Nathan, was going to, oh, mommy, I'm sorry, mommy. But I haven't done anything. And I yeah. actually don't yeah, want yeah. that reaction from him. Yeah. I didn't even get that angry. Yeah. But I think because I praise them so much and I'm there for them so much that they don't want to see anything negative from me towards them. Mm. 
So they don't want to see any disappointment from me towards them. And that is, is enough. And it's powerful as well because you, you, so know, powerful. you know, you, you have so much almost influence over them because yeah. of how you've treated them that any small thing, they're so worried about yes. being able to upset you yes. that almost they self-regulate, they self-parent yes, they they self almost. Yeah, right? they do, they do. I've never yeah. had to go beyond yeah. just showing that yeah. that's it, enough's yeah. enough and you're not doing that and that's not yeah. acceptable. But and I explain a lot, I, I, I give a lot. but I can see that. Career-wise, yeah. career uh, right now, what I'm doing is I'm still hosting, uh, but now it's not really hosting. It's a reality, 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 reality show. And it's the first time that it's being done in the Arab world. Uh, that's been going on for two, the last two years. But before that, I was, um, I was hosting two TV shows. The first one was had... Many names, but it was the same show. But it's the longest reigning makeover show in the world. Still so to even this day. E, it stopped after 14 years. Okay, wow. But in the UK, I think it stayed for seven. In okay. the US, for 10. Which is amazing in amazing. those markets. 14 consecutive. Never Incredible. had a break off, off the screen. Uh, and throughout, since 2004 till today, I managed to open Maison de Joël. It's a beauty salons. Yeah. Today I have 13, and they're from UAE, Saudi, Qatar, um, uh, uh, Algeria, Iraq, yeah. Erbil, Jordan, uh, Egypt, we're everywhere. Yeah. And then I opened uh, clinics, so with plastic surgeons, dermatologists, dentists, and doctors, yeah. professionals. Um, today we have nine. And you know what my first question is? Sorry, <laughs> Trump, you know what my first question is? Like, how do you find the time? I don't. I, I, I work day and night. And this is, I'm not just saying that. I, it's like, you know, like when you look at the calendar, and sometimes I ask my PA, I say, you know, like, treat me like a human. Yeah. Like, try to, the first thing when I'm trying to em em employ a PA, I say to her, can you give me vitamins, my vitamins every day? Can you order food for me? And then that disappears after the first two weeks because she also realizes she doesn't also eat. We're so like running from one thing to another, to another, to another, to another. I wake up in the morning. The first thing I reach before my coffee, I reach for my mobile. It starts with WhatsApp, then yeah. emails, Instagram. I need to post every hour and I'm the one every that controls hour. my Instagram. Wow. Yeah, I have. I, I think I checked it to yesterday. A quarter of a billion impressions uh, this month, in one month. But to have that, and why do I need that? So if I wasn't using Instagram to boost my business, I wouldn't even. I don't even have Facebook. Mm. So I have a fan page yeah. on Facebook. Well, that itself is a full time job, right? That, it's a full time. That, that, that's more just, than full time. Just social posting is so a full time. So I'm never job. in the car looking. So I still get lost in Dubai. If I'm driving, I still have to put the GPS. Yeah. I can't go anywhere. Yeah. I can't even go from my house to my mom's house. I swear to God, I cannot. I can't. I cannot because I'm never focused on the road. I'm always on the phone. So I you take. You gotta be very careful. No, 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 not when I'm driving. Ah, I say, when I'm okay, not driving, when say, I'm that's, driving that's gonna... it's the GPS. Yeah, 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 yeah. that yeah. takes me everywhere because I I don't know where I am half the time. Um, Look, before we dig any deeper, I, I, I do this on the show, right? Mm. Before I get into sort of the weeds yes. and understand a little bit more, uh, I give uh, the guests a chance with a safe word. So mm. there's a question that I, I ask that they are not super comfortable with answering. They have a chance to say whatever their safe word is. Do you have a safe word in mind? Luca, I'm not going to give you a word, <laughs> a safe word, because there's, there's nothing that I'll run away from. Honestly, there's absolutely nothing. You can ask me Anything you want, anything, about anything. What did nothing. you have for lunch? Oh, I had steak. <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> no, but honestly, you can ask me like the most intimate, personal, okay. I don't want to run away from any question. Okay. And that's just a very British attitude, isn't it? I yeah, mean, yeah, I grew yeah. up on Richard and Judy. Yeah. She's an alcoholic. Yeah. He's, I don't know how many years younger than her. Yeah. They discuss, they fight on the screen. They talk about their kids. And I, that was such it, so But it normal. somehow worked, didn't it? I mean, it was yeah. dysfunctional as you like, but it actually worked Amazing. Yeah. It worked. And, yeah. and even the biggest stars, they're so down to earth. All the British stars are so down to earth. I always say, we never know how much money they have. Look at, right? Yeah. All the British um, uh, celebrities. Correct. Uh, from Hugh Grant to the, the uh, what's his name? Uh, Victoria Beckham and, and David Beckham. Anyone. Yeah. 
uh, UK attitude is not about showing off. It's about yeah. being real. Yeah. And you get smacked in the face if you're not real. The the media, the British media will not yeah, accept you. If you're you. not authentic, they'll see oh my straight God. through you. Of and, course. And they'll hang you out to dry. Exactly. They so are, they are, I think it's the hardest, sorry to interrupt, it's the, it's the toughest, they're the most critical people in the world, the British yeah. tabloids. So yes. you, if you can make it in the UK as a celebrity, yeah. I think you can make it pretty much yes. anywhere, right? Yeah. Even the Americans, they run away from the They're UK so transparent, it's yeah. crazy, yeah, the no, things they say. And so I grew up in my home in Lebanon, not being allowed to ever lie. Not even, a, there's no such thing as a white lie. You know, like, oh, there's one, no, 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 no. So we grew up, no lies. and. They used to tell us in school, we can read it on your forehead if you lie. So it was like, oh, I can see, <laughs> I cannot lie. And that's why you started launching I makeup. I swear to God, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Botox forever, beautiful, yeah. I love it. There's no way yeah. to show it. Look, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that you're opening up and you're not going to give a safe word. I probably wouldn't have to, you probably wouldn't have to use it anyway. No. But uh, no, I appreciate that. One question I do also ask is because I work in advertising, I work in marketing. I always ask my guests, is there a particular brand out there that they love and, and why? You know, what is it about their brand that they, they particularly love? Yeah, I love all the brands that I worked with. I was uh, the face of. I've always uh, dug deep into their history. I enjoyed where they came from, their beginnings. Uh, I believed in every single brand. I mean, can I mention them? Yeah, yeah? go for it. So I was uh, the, the regional creative director for Max Factor. I used to know every single name of every foundation, lip liner, lipstick, gloss. For 10 years, I never used anything else. Mm. There were other uh, makeup artists, like so, like the makeup artists that, that represented England or uh, Italy. So we used to meet in, in global uh, conferences. And I used to be so uh, surprised that they didn't really use Max Factor. They only used it in the shoot. Mm. And I felt like, wow, what a lie. How can you do that? Yeah. How can you just just in the shoot use the brand, but when you don't love it uh, in, in reality? Going back to your point about being real, right? Yeah. So I also worked with Dyson, and I used to swear by Dyson. Um, I, did, I was brand ambassador for Evian. Again, when I went to Evian, I was like, oh, my God, this is insane. Yeah. Like, I remember saying, we stood where the rain would fall on the ground yeah. and where we stood, it will take 15 years for those droplets of water to reach where the water comes out from. And yeah. it's one source. Yeah. So all the water we drink comes from one source. Yeah. And it's 15 years of you know, being filtered through the, uh, all the stones and blah, blah, blah yeah, to yeah, reach yeah, yeah. in the end to have yeah. mineral water. Yeah. And I've become like such an advocate and I want to fight their fight. So I want to like tell people that drinking zero water with no minerals is so bad yeah. because when we sweat, we don't just sweat water, we sweat water with minerals. So we need to replace that. So I become so passionate about the I think the that brands. honestly, this conversation since it started, the word I would describe most about you is passionate. You, you come across as, as one of the most passionate people I've ever met and it's, it's extraordinary. Yeah. Can I ask you? Thank you. Where, where does this come from? I don't know. I ask myself this question many times, especially when I'm very tired, especially when I feel like I want to, I don't ever feel like I want to give up. So I, I need to, you know, I, I, I question myself all the time about so many different things. Why I'm so tough on myself? Why can't I live a normal life? Because I want to be lying on the beach. We live in Dubai, right? I want to be going to malls and just walking. I want to be with my children all the time, go with my son and watch him play and be by the side of my daughter and do silly things and, and dance on TikTok or on Instagram. But I keep myself so busy that I hurt myself. I'm not kind to myself. I'm not kind to Joel. I don't, I have a clinic. I haven't been to my clinic since, since seven months, okay. since like, uh, May, May last year. So yesterday the clinic manager called me. She's like, Joelle, we think of sending you flowers and a card it's just to invite you to Clinica. Yeah. And I know I need a lot of work. I need like some Botox for my neck. You I don't need, need anything. You look great. I need, you look great. I need for maintenance. I need because we need to maintain, uh, but I don't have the time. Yeah. So even though I have a clinic, I have, look at my nails. You know, there's a, there's a saying in Arabic. And I'm going to say it in Arabic, then I'll Please. translate it in English. It's called, Bib al-Najjar The door of the carpenter is broken. 
So the carpenter does all the... Doesn't have time to fix his own door. Yeah, exactly. But where does this passion come from? I think just wanting to prove that that I can do great things and maybe... Who are you trying to prove it to? I don't know. Also, like honestly, I don't know. Hmm. I, I, I do like people clapping. You mentioned before that you, you feel you're quite hard on yourself. Yeah. Right. Again, do you know why? No. Why you give yourself such a hard time? I had an amazing childhood, but, and I hope my dad doesn't listen to this, um, hmm. but I think I wanted more praise when I was young. I don't, I used to be jealous of when my dad was praising like all the athletes during the Olympics. Or my dad would praise young actors. I remember there's a movie called The Champ. Mm. And there was this young blonde actor that was just incredible. Uh, And my dad would praise him like, my God, actor so whenever my dad would praise someone that was young for talent. You were like, hello. Yeah, but I never dared to say hello. And I had nothing to show. Mm. Uh, you know, in Lebanon, I just went to school. Yeah. I had nothing for them to notice me. So what, so talk me through you know, the unnoticed Joel, mm. right? How did you start becoming noticed? What, what was the trigger that made you say, you know what, I'm yeah. just going to go from an ordinary going to go to school life yeah. in Lebanon to, you know, start the journey of superstardom? How, how did yeah. that start? First of all, honestly, the more the older I'm getting, the more um, answers I get for questions that I have to myself. Because I don't like fame. So I don't necessarily enjoy when people recognize me. And of course, everyone, my show had 120 million viewers for 17 years altogether. Mashallah. Mashallah, exactly. Because it's NBC One and it's it's got the highest reach. Uh, even my show today, the reality show, uh, Joel Bella Filter, Joel Without a Filter, it's trended uh, in Australia, Canada, US, uh, uh, New Zealand, Germany, Sweden, and the UK. So it's, it's crazy. So it's crazy. We, these are Arabs that live in the countries. I mean, those you countries. could pass for Swedish, so I understand that. <laughs> um, but I feel that. The reason I do all of this is because I need to prove for me and for others. I always feel like I have a responsibility to show others that they can also do it. So when I was young, I remember when I was eight years old, honestly, I'm telling you, I remember lying in my bed and thinking, I want to be like Mother Teresa. So I want to be someone that can change the world, someone that can do so much good that she can actually affect people. So I always thought, but how am I going to be that? So maybe one day I'll be famous, but why should I be famous? So I always felt like maybe one day I will have an impact on, on, on earth. And then when I became famous uh, and I started to hate the fame, I was like, why, why I do this? Why can't I go back to just maybe being a makeup artist and running a salon? Because I don't enjoy that part Mm. of people looking. Mm. Then I thought, you know what? I'm inspiring so many girls and I love, the one thing I love, the outcome of what I do is when young women come and say to me, I want to be strong like you. I hope my daughter grows up to be like you. I tell my daughter, come and watch Joelle. I want you to be like her. So on all the different levels, that appreciation of the achievement makes me want to achieve more. So the minute I tasted achievement, it made me addicted to more achievements. And the problem, let's say I made the number one female show, it just wasn't enough anymore. I needed to do more. So then I started the salons. Oh, it wasn't enough that I had my own five salons in the UAE. I want to be in Saudi, in Qatar, abroad. When that finished, oh, what's next? Yeah, I'm working on a hair care line, but that's just not enough. Oh, let me open the clinic up. Every time I feel I can create a brand, so I I create a name and I make the brand happen and it's alive. I I say I give give birth to it the day I launch it. After a year, I need more. It's like someone that needs more children. Even though the children are- It's an addiction. The children are a headache. They are, of course, because we worry about them. They're a responsibility. 
We work so hard at raising them, but why do we need more? Do you, do you think you're, you're, you're addicted to the success of it? And, yes, and, and, I think. And because you're inspiring so many people, you feel like you have to inspire more people. And by inspiring more people, how do you do that? You need more success. That, one ma that makes me cry. So recently, after the podcast, I started this trend of asking people on Instagram twice a week, like, what did you, did you listen or watch? Because it's on YouTube and it's, it's yeah. podcast, my podcast. And I just sit there and I'm just overwhelmed with emotions and, and tears are flooding from the response that I'm getting. One of them, I'm never going to forget all of my life. She said, I don't, Joelle, I don't have a mom. You're my internet mom. No oh, wow. I'm learning. I, like, I, look, I get yeah. goose pimples. Yeah. yeah. And and do you see that as a as a huge responsibility? How, I mean, what, what when I you hear that, what do you think? I see it as as if someone has come and has given me a biggest hug, and it's like all oh, the hard work is really worth it. So I'm no longer beating myself up, and I'm no longer allowing myself to feel any pain from all the hard work because that word. Just be all worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. It fuels you, right? It just yeah, it fuels me. I yeah. tell them like you charge my batteries, Amazing. so the good feedback really charges my batteries and keeps me going. Oh, I'm not like crying. I'm also I'm very emotional, by the way. I, okay. I might be very passionate, but That's I'm very it. emotional. That's okay. <gasps> yeah, and when I'm tired, I cry a lot. So you know, the um, best people tend to be passionate. The yeah. best people tend to be emotional. Mm. So yeah, it's yeah. Do you be you? It's absolutely yeah. fine. But if I want to think like. If I'm selfish, I think I wouldn't do any of the projects that I'm doing. Yeah. Today, I learned from my podcast, because I interview psychologists, so my podcast is, is different to yours. In my podcast, I learn. So I have psychologists, and we talk about one topic. Mm. And then, because I don't prepare, so I learn on the spot, and yeah. I become the audience, because my questions are probably the same questions as what the audience would ask. And one of them, after we finished, she told me, you have blah, 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 whatever. Like, I can't remember what she defined me as. And I said, what's that? And she said, you have a huge uh, level of empathy. And these are types of people that whenever there's anything happening with someone else, they automatically put themselves in their shoes. And I'm like, oh my God, this is exactly what I do. Yeah. I put myself in the shoes of the ant. So I don't like to kill ants. I don't like to kill spiders. I'm like, haram, like he's just, you know, walking. Why did I just suddenly, I'm this giant, just yeah. stepped on him or killed him. Yeah. And these ants, the poor ants, they're like collecting food for the winter. Why do I just need to go and kill them? Even I'm talking about the insects, but more towards people so maybe sometimes you ask me a question i can't give you a straight answer because i'm still asking myself yeah you're still trying to figure it out look we're all trying to yeah. figure it out it's yeah no one why has, do we do what we no do no one has all the answers it's mm. just it's life is just throws curveballs left right and center and you've got to try and navigate them as best yeah. you can and figure out as you go along yeah. and guess what there's no manual no one gives you a guide say hey this is how you handle life no. this is how you handle success this is how you handle being a great parent we just have to figure it out I knew I would always be a good mom. Yeah. Even when I was 12, I used to take care of the, the neighbor's kids. But I never knew I'll be what I am today. Yeah. So I never imagined that, not even in my wildest dreams. And you can't prepare for it. No. So speaking about being unprepared, mm -hmm. I have with me a bag of balls. Okay. Okay. And in this bag, there are How topics. Many balls? <laughs> There's quite a few of them. There's quite a few okay. of them. Um, you haven't seen this, right? No. You have no idea what's in here. No, no, no. So these are topics. I don't I, know what kind of balls. Yeah, either. you're going to find okay. out. You're going to find Let's out. See. So in here are some topics I think will be interesting to you. So why don't you pick okay. one or even two or even three? Okay. And then we can... Yeah, we'll Do I pick there. one at a time? Pick one at a time. Blindly or blindly? Are they, they coloured? No, they're not coloured. Oh, they're not coloured. No, no, just we're, we're very simple here. We're very simple here. Okay. All right, what do we have? Oh, makeup artist or TV star? Yes. So for sure, TV star because because of the fame, I'm able to inspire uh, women uh, to be kinder to others, to be supportive of one another, uh, showing people that even if you're a star, you still be a good mom, don't neglect your children, uh, showing honesty, that honesty is so beautiful, no need to 
pretend yeah. no one had any surgery when you have done. So being a TV star, TV host, it gives you that accessibility, right? Yeah. To be able to speak to many. Whereas yes. to being a makeup- It gives maker, me a voice. Yeah, but yeah. Is it, is it, does it fit your personality more? Because you no. started off doing something else. Uh, yeah, I started off as a makeup artist. Uh, I, my God, I struggled as a young makeup artist in the UK. You don't work in salons in the UK doing no. makeup. No. So you go from studying makeup artistry to suddenly trying to compete with the big guys and the big girls for jobs in TV, theater, uh, photo shoots, fashion shows. So it's, it's hard to build a portfolio. I worked for more than two years, absolutely for free, yeah. uh, with photographers and yeah. models yeah. that were starting out yeah. to, to, to have a portfolio yeah. because who's gonna book me? I didn't show them my work. Correct. There was no social media. And you're learning your craft, right? Yeah. At the same time. So you yes. need it to help prove, but yeah. you also need to help learn. And develop. Yeah, experience. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very nice. Right, next ball. Next that was ball. quick and easy. Yeah. That was actually quite a nice one because it's a very easy one. There are some tougher ones in there. Are there? Yeah, what does this say? Hard work or lady luck? Oh, I wish right. lady luck. So let me explain this, right? So what is more important in developing a career? Is it working extremely hard, right? Of course. Or do you need to have lady luck shining down on you to help you actually be successful. What is more important in your opinion? Okay. And don't sit on the fence here. No, let me tell you. Amazing. I believe in God. So I'm someone who, I thank God every day. I don't forget that God is around. So I do no wrong. Yeah. This is part of also my character. I don't do wrong. I'm scared of punishment. I'm scared that God will punish me through my kids, through anything. So it's like God to me is like my dad. Yeah. I will never ever disrespect my dad. I will never ever do anything that will upset my dad. So I'll never yeah. hit my brothers and sisters, which are the people. I will never stab someone in the back. I will never lie to anyone. So I am always aware of that. The other part, let's say God is my dad, okay? God, if my dad is rich and can give me anything that I want, like God yeah. can give us anything what we want, God is not going to give some, one of his children who's lazy, who's sitting on the couch. Yeah. So if God has all the money and he's going to choose which child he will give inheritance to, he's going to give the one who's trying so hard, wakes up in the morning till end of night, not making any money, struggling, but wanting success and yeah. being straight and ha with a vision. So I've always believed that it's definitely hard work and it's God paying me back every single time. So you're leaning on hard work. Hard work and no More, luck. No I, luck, you don't believe To okay. me, yeah. I find offensive yeah. the amount of work, the hard work that I do yeah. to think that it's luck. Yeah. Even coming to Dubai and I knocked on NBC's door, but I was already for two years working for free. Yeah for a magazine doing exactly what I did, ended up doing on my show. Yes. So they saw that, oh, my articles were bringing in um, advertisers. Yeah, yeah. So it was, oh yeah, let's try her. Let's yeah. do a pilot and it worked. But if I just, oh, I wanna be on TV. Oh, I wanna be a famous makeup artist. And at the time I wanted to be a famous makeup artist, not a star. So I wanted to be on television to be known for what I do. Yeah for being a makeup artist and someone that can transform people. Yeah. Not beyond that, my thought was not beyond that. Yeah. I'm so, with you. Um, I'm with yeah. you. so perseverance, hard work, yeah. and a focus. You need a focus. strong focus on of what course. you want to go and deliver. Yes. I look, I've heard other people say that, you know, a, a very random conversation here and there helped guide them down a completely different path. And they attributed that conversation or that nudge to Lady Luck, and that's actually helped propel them. But in your case, it looks like you've made your own success without relying on anybody else. Yeah. That's how it I works. think uh, that, and I believe, because I'm not gonna go into it, but maybe in, on, on an, in another, uh, in another podcast, because it's gonna be long. I started working when I was 14 years old, as I went to school. And every time I realized I wanted more. Can I ask what were you doing when you were 14? I was doing babysitting. And then I never asked my dad for any money since I was 14. Oh, I used wow. to really enjoy the money I was making. Yeah. And I remember looking forward to Saturday to go and spending it all yeah. or saving it to buy something more expensive. Yeah. So I started to know the value of money from such a young age. Yeah. And then at the age of 16, 17, the YMCA approached me to teach me 
to become a fitness instructor. But the catch was you will sign with us one year exclusivity because we're going to pay for you and teach you. And I was like, oh, no, I'm going to university. Yeah. I can't be linked to them. Yeah. Why don't I do it? And then I'm free to teach wherever yeah. I want. Yeah. So I took, I borrowed money from my aunt, Auntie Itala, when I name her. <laughs> yeah. And because I borrowed two times money from her to do to do projects that got me where I am today. And I remember I was making 35 pounds an hour. Do you know that's like 25 years ago? More. Sorry, like no, no, no. 30 years ago. That's I was a 17, lot of money. Per I was 17 years old. It's a, lot a lot of money. money. A lot of money for a 17, 17 year old. Year old especially. Yes. Yeah, when I went to uni, I, I had my I own car. That much money when I, I had 17. my own car, and I had you know the mobiles, the banana mobiles, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Classic. everyone thought I was posh. I wasn't yeah. posh. Yeah. I was just making money. But you were grafting. Yeah. So, so if you think about it, you're hard, work, working hard and kids because you're babysitting. That's how yeah. we started. They go hand in yes. hand right from a very early age. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Right, time for the next ball. You pick one, then I'll pick the next one. Okay. You like, you like my bag of balls? <laughs> okay, no, I grabbed. Okay, last day. I'm gonna grab this one. Okay, what have we got? Favorite childhood memory. Look at that. I mean, look at the. What are the odds? Yeah. I talk about you as a babysitter yeah. on your. So, what is your? Can I have more? Than, can I give you more than one? You can give as many as you okay. like. So, crazy enough as it is, as much as I appreciate growing up in the UK, and it's what you, I feel the UK made me who I am today. So not Lebanon. In Lebanon, I never believed in myself. The school made me feel like an idiot, that I'm, I'm useless. Mm. Uh, the school system in the in, in Lebanon didn't suit me at all because I can't remember anything. I have a very bad memory, but they didn't pick up on any other skill that I, that I had. Uh, so, but if I go back now to all the forty-seven years of my life, my best memories are in Lebanon. Mm. So I cherish my childhood. Give me a memory. Everything. So it's the sound of the waves going to my grandmother's house. It's the first rain picking snails with my friends. It's running through the fields and, and stealing an orange from the tree and feeling as if I've stolen something big. But my friend made me do it, this one bad friend. Um, oh, yeah. The friend uh, made you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, yeah, she yeah. just like bullied me. It's like, yeah. pick it, pick it, pick it. Ah! <laughs> and then I picked it. Um, going to the beach and fishing uh, on the rocks alone for hours and hours and hours. And, and you know what's love about it? All of your memories are of our nature. They're yeah. nothing linked necessarily to technology. Oh, no, or, nothing. Or, or like, you know, they're just the most simple but the most rewarding and oh, lovely memories. It's being right? with my cousins yeah. at the back of a car and waving yeah. at uh, other cars and, uh, yeah. and then, like, you know, getting shy and, 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 and hiding. Uh, yeah, nice. I never played on the streets because I was always like a sh shy person. But it's crazy. I mean, people who was watching this, you know, who watch you, you know, on TV, yeah. on your shows, they, when you say something like that, they're like, that can't be true. How yeah. can she be a shy person? So, for example, if you had a party and you say, oh, well, you know, yeah. you know, I like come with your husband. I'd yeah. be so shy to come if you had a lot of people. But I'm very happy to come if it's just yourself and your wife. Yeah. So I'm much better when it's one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. I, I think I've always been uh, worried about being judged. Yeah. So I worry of what others think of me, yeah. always. Yeah. Do they like me? Do they yeah. not like me? So I have to prove myself that I'm yeah. a nice person yeah. at like the very first minute yeah. of arriving. And, so and I'm those always smiley. Yeah. And those negative comments, they hurt you? Not when they come from social media. Okay. Those that don't hurt at all. They can okay. say the worst thing. But they might have done at the beginning, or have you just got used to it, or they never bother you? I don't remember anymore, honestly. Okay. I can't, cannot, because I don't like to lie. So I don't remember. Maybe they did. Today, what hurts me, and I block people, immediate block, like immediate, yeah. Yeah. if someone <laughs> accuses me of lying. Yeah. So with my reality show, I was burgled in France two times. Oh, no. And we used the footage of the cameras uh, as part of the show, and I told the story of, you know, losing... Yeah. A lot of valuable things that meant, a lot. one of yeah. the things meant a lot to me. It was my engagement ring. Yeah. 
And so when people started writing, oh, you're lying, uh, or oh, these are actors, I can tell they're actors. Someone said, ha, 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 look at, look at the thief, how he's walking. <laughs> they thought this and that. So just block, block, yeah. block, block. That yeah. offends me when someone tells me I'm a liar. I mean, if you're a thief, you've really picked the wrong house. <laughs> Let's be honest, there's cameras everywhere. But yeah. look, that, I, I, I hear you. But they I, were not caught, and yeah, anyway. That's, yeah. that's, that's crazy, right? Mm. Um, so we're talking about childhood memories. Is there a way in which you want your kids uh, to grow up with certain memories? I know, look, obviously you have a 21-year-old boy, yeah. so his son, so less, less so with him, but maybe with Ella, with Nathan, yeah. is there a certain type of memory or childhood memory that you want them to have? One thing, my oldest son, which made me cry so much and it made me feel so happy because I never knew. You know when kids, they become teenagers, they go through such a funny phase and you feel like they hate you, they don't like you, they don't listen to you. And I never knew if he was happy. Like mm. I, I was trying to provide the best life. Like we go to the Maldives two, three times a year. I take them ski every single year. And by the way, all my holidays with them is for them. Mm. So when I go on holiday, I enjoy their happiness. Yeah. So I enjoy giving them an experience. So I don't choose cities like uh, Paris or you know London. If we go to London, we go to my family. So I take yeah. them. Uh, to the farm, we yeah. go to the London History Museum, we go to uh, the, the aquarium, yeah. we do sightseeing. I make, I take them sightseeing. So my son, uh, when Corona hit, he, he looked different, he, he changed. Uh, he was in so much distress. And then I just sat him down, because you know, I'm very visual with my children. And I'm like, Bailey, there's something wrong. So what is it? He's like, oh, I can't sleep. So first it started, I can't sleep. So we started to suggest to him like her herbal medicine that was uh, natural to help him uh, sleep, but he was still struggling. So I said, do you mind, Bailey, if, I, if you see a life coach? Mm. He said, yes. And I said, I want to ask you, if you allow me to be in your bedroom, I'll literally sit in the corner and I will not say anything. And he said yes. So my daughter as well, she did speak to a life coach, but she didn't accept for me to be in the room with her. Different personalities, and it's crazy. Yeah. Ella was 11, it was just last year. Bailey was already 17, and he accepted. Anyway, yeah. so I go in the room with Bailey, and apparently his problem was, why should I die? I'm so happy with my life. And oh my God, I, was, I remember I was crying so much, and I was so happy. It's the first time I knew how happy my son was. Mm. And he's like, I'm so happy with my life. Why should I disappear? Why should I just not exist anymore? Yeah. And, and she explained to him that you have those thoughts because you used to go to school, you used to hate going to school, you used to hate so, certain uh, like subjects, yeah. to see certain people, maybe certain uh, teachers, and now your mind is free and it's taking you to places that it shouldn't at your age. Yeah. But listening to my son, saying he's so happy was maybe the biggest prize for me, bigger than anything that I might get from, from work. Amazing. So still when I put them next to each other, as much as I work hard for my business, yeah. the satisfaction from the business is very short-lived for me. It's like during the launch mm -hmm. and maybe a couple of weeks after the launch. And after that, nothing. But with my children, uh, so that one word out of him. It meant the world to you. Yeah, it meant the world to me. Amazing. Do you want to pass me the bag? Yeah. All right. Let's see, Let's see what I'm going to get next. Okay. You like this? I it's love it. Nice, right? Yeah, I love nice. it. Ah, uh, this is one of my favorite ones. Okay. <laughs> so this says Queen of Hearts yes. or Queen of Diamonds. No, Queen of Hearts, of course. So what do I mean by this? So is oh, it. look. <laughs> So what I mean is, nothing from a queen of hearts, you know, is it more important to you to be, and I think I know the answer, but to be a good person, to be an empathetic person, or is it more important to to deliver success, to be able to provide for your family and to be able to have all of the joys, being able to go to the trips that you mentioned. Um, and that's really where it comes from. So is it better to be a good person or yeah. is it better to be, or is it, you know, more important to be successful and provide, I guess. Mm. No, I'm very ethical. So I'm someone that, like I told you, even the brands that were paying me to support them, I treated them like they were my own. Uh, and 
I was just paid a certain some amount, like a certain amount, not not to the dedication that I gave them. I gave them ten times what was agreed in the contract. Yeah. So for me, uh, I think the the most important, apart from being a good mom, if I want to choose a second title, it would not be worldwide famous entrepreneur. It will be the Queen of Arts, because I feel like with my kindness, I want to change the world, and I. I'm very down to earth, but I know what I've done in the region so far. When I first came here as presenters, we used to stand next to each other and they wouldn't even look to say hello. And I always felt like, it's okay, I can say hello. Yeah. It's like, hi, how are you? And yeah. proving to them that Break I'm the kind mold. and I'm nice and you look amazing and you yeah. look great. And sometimes I felt, can I swear? Can I swear? You, you can I felt swear. like shit sometimes yeah. because they made me feel like shit. They made me feel like as if I was being a hypocrite, yeah. but I really wasn't. Yeah. I really was saying, saying amazing things about them. They've made me feel like as if I was sucking up to them, but I wanted to show that I was being so nice. And I see a big difference since I started doing that. And when social media came and, and tagging them and saying great things about them. And I feel like I have participated in that change. And that change that we have in the region yeah. of that kindness, of that women empowerment. Yeah. And I always say, it's not enough to say women empowerment. What are we all doing? Are we doing anything about women empowerment? Are we empowering each other? Are we really raising the flag for one another? 90% of the content, the, the branded content on my social media is for free. 90%. I don't see anyone doing that. You name me one other celebrity or an influencer, someone with above a million, that actually takes time to film presents, yeah. cakes, biscuits, a cap, a towel, a abaya, a, a toy for a child. Yeah. Look, it's clear you have a, you have a huge heart. Um, on, on this, do you have a, a, a wish for your kids? I mean, if they, are they like you at the moment? Are they? I don't want them to be like me. You don't want them to. No, Why is that? Because I don't want them to. But be you like said me. you want to be. You want to be seen as a good person. You want to be seen as a good role. No, I want them to be. I want them to be good people for sure. Yeah. But I don't want them to work as hard as I as I do. I want them to enjoy life more. Like okay. my mom yesterday, we had that conversation. I was with someone from Al Arabiya. Mm. He's a presenter. He's been with Al Arabiya for twenty years. And uh, he's like, oh, well done. So my mom said, no, but I'm not happy. You know, he's like, why? You should be proud of her. She said, yeah, I don't care about being proud of her, but she's not living, she's not living her life. This yeah. is her prime. Yeah. She should be living her life. And yeah. I understand, because yeah. I understand my mom, because yeah. if that was Ella, yeah. I would don't want my daughter to be working so hard. Yeah. I want her to enjoy. So that'll be the princess of hearts. Yeah. Amazing. Very nice. For my daughter. For your daughter, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, time for another ball? Yeah. All right, here we go. I'm going to take, we're going to do two more, right? I'll yeah. do one, you do one. Very simple. This uh, asks, what makes you happy? Oh, my it's children in nature. You can throw me on an island. I'm going to throw this to you. Yes, you? yes. You can put me, and I'll take my sister-in-law with me as well. You can put me on an island with absolutely nobody no one, no events, no high heels. I love fashion, but it's not what makes me happy. So my children, my family means a lot to me. I'm a family person and nature. So I love nature. I love the beach and I love the mountains. So I love the sea and I love the trees and I love gardening and I love plants and just put me in nature, just and leave me and forget me. Well, I got you a tree. I mean, <laughs> it's, I mean it's, it's, about, it's about as good as I could do right yeah. now. Yeah, they're gorgeous, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, time for uh, you to pick out the, oh, really? the, the uh, okay. time for you to pick out the last one, I think. Okay, let me see which one of these. Mm, okay, oh, okay, this one. Oh, so what work say? life balance or finding peace. Okay, so what do I mean by that? What is more important to you? Because you said right at the beginning of the show, you're cra you work crazy hours, you're nonstop. So getting that work-life balance, is that important to you or is it more important for you to find that, that sort of peace inside? Okay, so I should answer and say, of course, peace on the inside. 
That's, that should be it's, it's, the normal answer. It's, it's, it's whatever but you feel the most. That should be my answer. It should be, but it it's not. It should be my priority. But it's not. No, of course. My priority should be that I should be, you know, balanced. Yeah. But of course I'm not balanced, especially in season two of my show. After we had finished, I was super mentally scarred because of the pressure I put on myself during those two and a half months. Uh, so I had 25 staff and uh, crew in my house, in my kitchen, in my bathroom, in my bedroom, in my living room from the moment wow. I opened my eyes till I went to sleep. So I had no escapism. Can you imagine that? I can't like, actually. Honestly, can you imagine? <laughs> I even had like lights fitted in my ceiling permanently for two and a half months. But not only that, I was changing outfits minimum seven times a day. What? Yes. <laughs> what? And it was like, you know, do you have you seen the movie? I don't even know if I have seven outfits. <laughs> have, you, have you seen Groundhog Day? I have. You Bill have. Bill Murray, yeah, great Every movie. Every day I yeah. wake up and my producer is at the bottom of the bed. She's like, come on, Joelle. Come on, wakey, wakey. And then it's like, oh my God, again. Yeah. As much as I wanted to share my life with the old, my audience to see a celebrity who's a mom, who's an entrepreneur, yeah. what life is truly like. Yeah, uncensored. Uncensored completely, like fly on the wall. Zero filter. You know, my, my dream was fly on the wall mm. style. Mm. The real reality. Yeah, yeah. But to give that reality, it tore, tore me mm. apart. And it took me all of the whole summer till maybe the last week to feel peace. Um, and now I did it to myself again since January till last week. Yeah. So it was the launch of the show. It was the launch of the podcast and the launch of my son's brand, Devdoob, all at, in one time. Yeah. So which one is it? I want peace. You want the peace. So why why is this? Why do you want the peace? What again, I, I'm getting the sense that I'm a with simple you, person. But Joel, I'm getting uh, from you, you are so you are, but I, yeah. I I'm getting the sense that you are someone who genuinely does so much for everybody else. You love to please, make everyone else happy. Um but what about yourself? You know, and it's it's at what expense does you trying to make everyone else happy hurt you, right? Because it's great to look after your kids. It's great to have, want the best for them. It's great to build this fantastic career where you can help and inspire other women. But at the end of the day, it's just going to be you, right? You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna, you're the one who goes to bed. You close your eyes and you're in your own thoughts. So, are you doing the right thing for you? I don't know, but it's just like it cannot be done any other way. That's the problem. So people say to me, "Wow, like, you know, like." Clinica, Maison de Joël, Joël Paris, I Candy, The Doob, Now, The Podcast, The Reality Show. How do you do it? Oh, I do it because I put myself last down the list. My husband told me just a few days ago, and I said, you know, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. I said, you know, I'm just looking forward for the holiday. And he said, it's so true. He said, stop living just for the holiday. Yeah. So I feel like all I do to be able to last, I keep on promising myself, you know, yeah. like how, oh, be a good boy, yeah. tidy up your room every day, and at the end of the month, I'm gonna get you a toy. And I, by myself. Do it yourself. I buy myself those toys, which yeah. is the, the relaxation, but yeah. I, I need to enjoy every day. You need, that you need that treat and advance to look forward to to keep yeah. you going, but, yeah. but it's depleting. I mean, you're, you're giving so much all the time to so many different people. I'm trying to. It's maybe. tough, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, 24 hours, it's, it's incessant. How do you find that peace? How do you find that calm inside and go, you know what, it's okay. Maybe I, I've, I went to my couple therapist uh, for one session and unfortunately I didn't, have, didn't find the time to go again. But I just went to her with a lot of confusion and I just like, I want to know who am I? Yeah. I, I want someone on from the outside to explain it to me because I'm confused because I'm the Joel that likes to just hang out with my sister-in-law. That would be, that's the world to me. Yeah. I just sit and chat yeah. and have some coffee and tea and I want to be with my children and I want to enjoy just walking down the street. Yeah. Anyway, just let me go out and walk, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, enjoy nature and the sound of the birds. But then 
I'm doing the opposite of what I like. So why? Why do you do what I you do? I don't know. Yeah. I, I told you at the very beginning, yeah. I'm still, I don't have the answers. Yeah. So I also said one thing. When someone tells me, You're cha you've changed my life, that drives me yeah. to give up my freedom, my happiness, my peace for them. Yeah. Even though I don't know them, I've never yeah. seen them. It's just, they're just written to me. Yeah. They've written to me, you are my internet mom. I don't have a mom. You're my mom. But their their happiness or whatever they're feeling fills a hole. It fills something for yeah. you. It keeps you going. Right? Yeah. Look, I, like I say, we, we 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 don't have all the answers. We're all no. trying to figure it out. But you know, for people who are watching you, they look at you and go, "Wow, this, she is incredible as a as a person, as a mom, as a celebrity, whatever you want to call it." And they were like, "I want to be just like her." People are saying, "I, I want to be hate just it when like." People say that. And, and here's why? the thing. And you, yeah. So because I say elaborate. I'm yeah. not special. Okay, you can be, but if you put as much hard work as I do. So if you're going to give up all your spare time, every awake moment, you actually fill it with work. Your agenda is full for 16 hours. You cannot rest. You cannot rest. Even I eat whilst they're having, I'm, doing, I'm having my hair done. Or I always show people I eat food that should be hot. I eat it cold, like a cold burger. That yeah. has come out from the fridge. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we've, all, we've all I'm been there. Driving, we've all been there. I'm driving. Okay, I haven't done that. Yeah. That's my life. Uh, okay, question I've been wanting to ask you. Do you do your own makeup now? No, not anymore because I'm working. I and cannot, do, do I cannot you, afford to stare one hour in the mirror. Uh, but you can imagine the person. I don't have to name, name yeah. who they are. But imagine that person. They're doing the makeup for you, right? The they person were all who, nervous at the beginning. They must be freaking out. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm are. doing the makeup for Joelle. <laughs> this is are. crazy. I've always they wondered about that. Yeah. They are. But you know, I'll to go back to one thing. Because when people are going to listen to me, they're not going to understand why I'm complaining. Or maybe I'm ex or I'm going deep into the non-peace part of my 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 life that I dedicate to my work. But even if we look at tennis players, I watched a documentary on tennis players and they go through hell. But again, we ask them, why did they do it? What's the trophy? What does it mean so much to them? Yeah. Why, it, you know, tennis drives them insane. Mm. Apparently it's a very, very, very lonely. Very, I was going to tell you. The, very the lonely loneliest. career. It's one of the very few sports where you can make that successful, but you're on tour all the time alone. Not, not just on tour, alone. In you're your room. So, you're all you're a time. solo. Mm. But again, so why do they do it? So if they can control their feelings properly, would they continue? Yeah. So obviously some things in yeah. us we cannot control. Yeah. So there's a drive. I would say there's a drive I'm not in control of. I can yeah. t say what I like, yeah. what I don't like. Yeah. But there's a motor... Yeah. It's running on its own. So what comes next for you? I hope no more. Honestly, my sister-in-law today, she said, why don't you do <laughs> this eyebrow gel? I was like, listen, no more. But it's so tempting for me to build brands. Yeah. It's so tempting. You know, I, can, I, I think I enjoy building brands. Maybe yeah. I should open a company that Maybe just builds brands for other people. Let them bring the money and yeah. then I'll build it for them and then it can just go off. After that, I don't want any. So, I don't want to know about the the all right, so day let, to day. So let's let's okay. Because I work in the same industry. How would you describe yourself as a brand? Uh, I I always say I'm a women empowering brand, uh, really. Because even from day one, my show was about empowering women. Literally, I would get. I did 400 transformations. 400 women. So a woman would come to me at the beginning of the show and she'd be like, oh my God, I'm so scared. My husband is threatening he's going to marry another one. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fatter, I'm whatever, blah, blah, blah. She, she reaches the end. We, we hide all the mirrors. We put all her old pictures so she has a memory of exactly what she looked like before her veneers and before her surgeries and before yeah. her, everything else. And then we show her videos of when she first came on the show and what she was saying, you know, like, oh, I'm scared my husband's going to leave me if I don't make a change. And then we take her, we take her, we hold yeah. her hand and we take her into the studio. And when the time is right, it's like, okay, whatever you want, just look in the mirror and tell me what you see. And every single one, every single one, she'll go like, oh, yeah. I'm a star or oh, I'm a queen. You know, that is to make my tears run like a river, yeah. you know, down my face. Not because, oh, I did such a great makeup job. Because 
I've changed someone's life. Yeah. I was so aware of changing people's lives. So all my businesses were honestly uh, the passion. You say, where do you get the passion? To change women's life. Yeah. So when I did the clinic, I wanted everything under one roof. I wanted good service, good doctors, doctors that were not materialistic, that will never do something bad for someone just because for, for the money. Uh, when it came to eye candy, I want the best quality lenses. You know, I don't think I still make money from eye candy till now. Honestly, I spend so much on eye candy, on the the packaging, and on. Yeah. But I can't produce anything bad. Yeah. I, it's not. It's not who me. you are. It's not who no, you are. I need to be proud yeah. of my product. Yeah. You know, of the end result. Joel, you you are you honestly you are inspirational. Thank not, you. And not just for women. Thank so you. please don't just rule out the men Thank because you. men can also feel very inspired by Thank by you. what you're saying and what you're doing. Um, I really want to say thank you to you having joined me on the show today, but also to opening up. Um, you're a you're a good person, thank and I you. think if nothing else, from what I've heard, learned about you, that's what matters most. So, yeah. So thank you for being a wonderful person. And next time I won't introduce you as a host or TV <laughs> host or a, a, an entrepreneur. I'll just introduce you as a fantastic mom and a, yeah. and a great lady. So thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yes. you, Luca. Take care. Thank you. Bye -bye. <laughs>